Hey guys, I'm the 50s Kid. We are continuing on with the M54 engine rebuild series. In this video, I'm going to be removing the cylinder head. Uh, but before I actually do that, I'm actually going to crack all the bolts or loosen all the bolts, and then I'm going to retorque them to factory specs. This is because I want to find out if they have pulled the threads out of the block. Because what happens is the you know 99% of the time the reason you're doing a head gasket job is you've actually overheated the car and when that happens the cylinder head will lift and that'll actually pull on the bolt the bolt will the bolt could pull the threads out of the block because it's an aluminum block they are aluminum threads aluminum is not as strong as steel so that steel bolt is going to pull your aluminum threads out of the block happens to a lot of engines that have aluminum blocks, um, Toyotas, other makes, it's not just BMW. But it's a problem and you wanna find out about it before you get to the end, before you put your new cylinder head on and you get your new bolts and you try to torque them down and you find out they just spin and spin because the threads have been pulled. You wanna find that out now but, and so that you can fix it before we go ahead and put everything back together. So that's what we're gonna do, so let's get started. So before we get the cylinder head off, we're gonna to need to take this pipe off and it's actually held in with a 13 bolt back here and then a 10 right here. Oops. <laughs> Cut this zip tie. It's actually just holding the, uh, the cable for the knock sensor. So now this tube should come out and we're gonna need to pry on it. It's just stuck into the side of the cylinder head here. That's kind of all we needed. So you can see how nice and crusty it is. That's why you need to replace it. And there should be an O-ring. <laughs> actually, the, some of the tube is actually just broken off and it's stuck inside the cylinder head, so I'll, I'll get that out later on. But this is why I have these parts, uh, these replacement parts. Now we, uh, we don't need to do the bottom one because it's actually sticking into the timing cover, not the cylinder head, but I'll, I'll go ahead and do it anyway right now, just because I'm here. One here and then one here as well. They're all the same size. So that one of course broke off as well because it's extremely old, same thing. So at this point we should be free to Crack the head bolts. Now you want to do them from the outside in rather than from the inside out. Just the opposite way in which you torque them. See, the funny thing is this, uh, th this is actually getting in the way here. I, I probably will remove this. There are two bolts on either side. In fact, let me go ahead and do that. Those bolts are captive. So yeah, get that out of the way. Again, you do not need to remove the camshafts in order to do this. I just thought this would be a little clearer, easier for you guys to see. I could already feel that that was kind of moving before I was, uh, before it actually cracked. So that kind of worries me a little. I think that might be the first sign that some of these th threads have been pulled. Definitely, I think so. Yeah, look at that. That one didn't even didn't even snap like the others, so that's worrying. Okay. 
Yeah, the ones that are most likely to have pulled are the, the ones in the middle, because that's where a head, you know, lifts the most. So I bought this um, digital torque angle wrench it's just for this purpose, for engine rebuilding. Um, Snap-on actually is, makes this tool originally, you know, and theirs is like $400. And then I just happened to notice that Eastwood makes a version that is $100. So this is the Eastwood 13622, and um, it'll do up to 148 foot-pounds. And, you know, you can do the initial torque in foot-pounds, and then it'll measure the angle for you, so I don't have to mess around with any of the angle gauges, which is kind of nice. So um, I just figured I would go for it just because it would be that much easier and I'd like to have a really accurate torque wrench. So we're going to use this. Uh, the initial torque on these is 40 Newton meters, which is 30 foot pounds. And we're going to start in the center and uh, move outward. So. Okay. The Snap-on one has a lot more LEDs that are a lot easier to see. So, you know, obviously it's going to be nicer, but you know what? This one was affordable <laughs> and it's, it's still nice. Anybody's wondering about you know the length of this tool this, this is the BMW tool this is what the service manual says to use so you know they give you the torque based on the length of this so don't worry about you know if you're using a regular socket and an extension don't worry about losing torque or changing the torque values to make up for it this is about as long as it should be I think this is about six inches long Okay, so everything's at 40. So now we're gonna move on to angle mode. We're gonna do another 90 degrees and then, you know, another 90 degrees after that. Okay, I'll put this thing back on this bolt, go over to angle button or angle mode. It calibrates the angle that it's at. Now it reads zero. So now I'm just gonna go 90 degrees so it tells me I'm at 90 degrees. The nice thing about this is if I don't have room, I can stop, re reset the wrench, go back into torque mode again, or angle mode again, so it's zeroed. So just to show you what I was talking about, I can go like that, and then I can go back, and I can keep going. So that's pretty nice, um, but yeah. So let's keep going.
So now we're going to do that again to get up to our final torque. Didn't like that. Okay, well, everything did torque to proper specifications, so I think that's a good thing. I think everything was all right. Uh, this bottom bolt made me a little nervous with the, the creaking it was doing, but I guess we'll find out for sure when we take the thing out, see if any of those threads are actually pulled. I mean, why would they have torqued down to factory spec if they weren't pulled, right? So, I think that's a good thing. I think it's good. I'm going to go ahead and pull them all off again, and uh, then we'll pull the cylinder head off. Every head bolt comes with a washer. Got to get that washer out of there so you don't lose them. Your new, your new head bolts won't come with the washers, so you're reusing those. Come on. And if you, you know, the, the nice thing about having this socket is that it's got this little ball detent that grabs onto the bolt, kind of helps you pull it out of there. So if you're doing this with the, the camshaft still in, you'll pull the bolt by itself and then you'll need to just come in with a magnet to get the washer out. So, I mean, I can use this thing to pull these out and just do it that way. Ah. guys it's time to get this thing out of here so of course we've got uh, coolant a little extra coolant that's spilled right there I don't have any paper towels left so I think I'm just gonna do this my coolant drain bucket is like right down there so, eh, didn't come up all the way. Let's get this head gasket off of there. Because we're gonna like analyze it a little later. See where it did fail. See, I don't see that it failed along anywhere here. If it did fail, I would have expected like blackness to be uh, all the way across like that. So it's probably definitely the head that lifted. Yeah, anyway, let's get a close up. Cylinder number one here. Cylinder one. There's two. Yeah. Three. Four. Five. And six. Honestly, much cleaner than I would have thought. Looks like uh looks like five might be the dirtiest, or maybe it's just the angle I'm seeing it at. But yeah. Very interesting. Here's the cylinder head. There's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Well, that's, that's surprising. I'm actually really, really happy that none of the threads pulled out of the block. So cool. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm very surprised. I totally thought that a lot of the threads would have been pulled. But anyway, uh, that's one less step that I have to do. I will try to touch on, um, well, you know what? What I will do is I will link the video that I was originally going to follow. I mean, all I was gonna do was literally duplicate that guy's video because what he showed in it was, you know, just perfect for me. It was, you know, if you have a drill press is really that particular video. If you don't, 
I will put a link in the description to the time cert kit that you need to buy in order to repair the, the threads with the block still in the car. There are, there are a couple of options for you. I mean, you can buy their $450 kit that comes with like a, an alignment plate that bolts down onto the engine and you can, you know, it's got guides with it so that you don't drill or tap anything incorrectly. You can do it that way. You can, there's also another guy who makes a very similar block and alignment plate and alignment tools. And I think he, he charges a lot less. I think he sells it on eBay. I'll try to find a link to him and put it in the description as well. Um, you can always freehand it if you want to, although I, I'm really not a fan of that because the, the threads are, are actually recessed down into the block by about six millimeters. So you need to actually drill out the holes with one size drill bit and then you need to, to use a bigger size drill bit to actually make that countersink because the time certs actually have a little, they have a little collar on the top of them. It's, this is very exaggerated, but they've got a little lip on the side of them that prevents them from, you know, being threaded down too far into that's what that's what stops them when you're kind of inserting them. So um, if you don't actually make a little countersink for that, the time cert won't kind of be in there all the way and, and you know, it'll interfere with the head. So you, you, you'd have to do a little more machining to make it work. But um, anyway, I'll, I'll put all the details in the description if you've got that problem. But other than that, I'm really happy with this. Uh, in the next video, I'll be cleaning up the head and the block and I'll be, I'll be doing measurements and we'll be figuring out uh, how much it's lifted and all that. So stay tuned, guys. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. I'm the 50s Kid. Thanks a lot for watching.